That's the one running. Knife crime is terrorising Britain's streets. White T-shirt, black, black shorts. Take this knife off And the people carrying deadly weapons are getting younger. I'm not sure how old he is, to be honest. He looks young. The brutal murder of Sean C. Sahai by two 12-year-old children changed lives in a split second. He was stabbed in a random and unprovoked attack by this park bench in Wolverhampton. The murderers, who we can't name for legal reasons, are the youngest ever knife killers in the UK. And their friends are left wondering why. It was just shocking. I thought he was going to grow up to be a basketballer or something. I never expected him to do something like that. Just stay there. Just stay there. The West Midlands has the highest rate of knife crime in the UK. The reason for that is very simple. Gangs. So literally walking across the road and you're in a different gang's territory? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's as simple as that. First, I'm in Wolverhampton. I want to find out why young children are choosing to join gangs, why they carry deadly weapons, and why they're not afraid to use them. They're not really um, comprehending the concept of taking someone's life. Malachi Nunes has the answers. He mentors troubled youngsters in the area. There's always been an area where there's like gangs or youth violence. Why do you think that is? Um, it's just um, poverty driven, really. So when you see the area where the young people are from, you'll see, you know, the high rise, low rise flats, um, low income. And that's kind of the drivers behind a lot of these things. Some of the youth are just carrying knives because they want to go rob someone else for something that they don't have. And have you noticed that the kids are getting younger that are carrying knives, or, or what are the young ones like? Um, nine years old is the youngest that I've spoke to. The youth up today go in jail. They're not really bothered because when you look at the jail facilities, a lot of them say, yeah, we go to jail. You've got PlayStation, you've got Xbox, you've got, um, you know, TV. And if their home life is in the worst position mm. than being in jail, it's a no-brainer. Especially if you're in a poverty-driven home where you don't get three meals a day. Like, I've heard young, young boys that I mentor say, you know what, you get three meals a day, at least you get fed. When I'm at home and I'm getting up in the morning, there is no breakfast for, for me to eat. Malachi wants me to meet someone, a teenager who has been in a gang for years. He now wants to leave that life, but that's easier said than done. How old are we talking that you were when you were sort of been going out carrying a knife? I'd say about 12, 13, so pretty young. That must have been pretty scary going through your head at the time thinking that you, you, you genuinely need a knife to protect you if you're going to go five-minute walk from your house? Well, yeah, but at the same time, no, because if someone else is rolling with one, wanting to hurt me with one, I don't know, I just feel like to do the same, to be honest. And what kind of knife would it have been? Just any knife, to be honest. Anything that I felt would protect me in that situation. Because where would you have got them from? Anywhere. Could get it from the kitchen, could get it from a shop, order it online, anywhere. Was there like a moment for you where you were like, I don't want to do this? Like the particular thing where you were like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be involved in this. Yeah, there was, near enough every day. But when you're around those people, you kind of have no choice but to do it. Because you're getting peer pressured into it. So, yeah, I don't see the point in it, to be honest. That's why I've kind of switched up from what I was doing. Went more on the positive path, done college, finding jobs. <laughs> I'm out with a specialist task force from West Midlands Police. This area has replaced London as the knife crime capital of the UK. Yeah, guys, you're all right. It's the last day of the school term. Yeah, yeah, man. Someone running. They run towards the danger. White t shirt, black, black shorts. The boy is detained. The crowd gathers and they're not happy. We're just going to talk to them and search you. It's obviously been a problem. But this time, no knife. And they're back on the road. Another call's come in. We've got our officers actively chasing somebody at the moment. A young boy with a weapon. He's 15. I'm a hand 
bro. Why the cops still tight, bro? And this is what they find on him. From our records, it seems that this individual has been a victim of street robberies in the past. So although we don't know his motive for uh, uh, carrying the knife uh, today on this occasion, potentially he might have it for his own protection. These are some of the deadly weapons on the streets here. People have handed these in, scared they'll be arrested. But there's plenty more where these came from, so-called zombie knives and machetes, like the one used by children to murder Sean. This is one of his young killers, posing with his machete across his chest. I've come to his home in Anguilla in the Caribbean to meet his younger sister, Shanna. This was Sean's favourite beach. It's where he learned to swim and where his family scattered his ashes. The same day that he passed away, he had called me, like, in school. I was in school, and he called me, like, during break time, and he had asked me, like, how I was and stuff like that. And he, that was the last day he told me that he loved me. Shanna is 15. She was appalled to hear how young his killers are. It was shocking, cos, like, wow, 12 year olds, Like... It doesn't make sense. It's just really crazy. It's an unforgivable act that she, kids would have done. Like, you should know, like, what's right and what's wrong. And I've been saying this from the beginning, that as 12 years old, you should know what's right and what's wrong. Shana is haunted, knowing the brutal way in which Sean was killed. Especially at night, I just think about it, like, into detail, and there's times that I would just be in my bed and just cry about it. It's still hard to believe she's lost her big brother. Almost like every day I wake up and think about him, and my mind just goes on him like immediately. And there's days that I that I'd ask like, how is he? Like for me, I don't. In my like mind, I don't think that he passed away. I'm not sure why, but I just don't feel like he's gone. But I know he is, but I just, like, I, it doesn't feel like that. Today, back in Wolverhampton, teenagers play just metres away from the murder scene, as if nothing happened. But when I speak to young people here, it's clear the brutal killing has left its mark. Danger is just something they have to live with. Kids mostly carry knives over to at call around friends use it for, like, to protect themselves. And, like, they're mostly around our age, like, 12, 13, to, like, the age of 17. And it's not tempting to you guys to...? No. No. I, w I would never carry a knife in my life. Like, I don't see why people do that. And, and you know people that have been threatened with knives? Yeah. Yeah. And I've also heard, like, people have been fighting around my school and that's why police are near enough there every day now. A guy that we were talking to was saying that sometimes kids are sort of hiding knives in the bushes outside school. Yeah, I think like, they go to it after school and then take it back out of the bush. Is that something the kids at your school do? Yeah. What I do is I just make sure when I, when I exit school, if I'm waiting for a friend, I wait for them, like, in school. Inside and, the reception. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as they come, I literally just go straight home or if my mum's picking me up, I just go straight to the to my mum's car. As I come to the end of my time here, I still want to find out why the two 12-year-old children chose to do what they did. I've met up with one of their friends. He knows both of the killers well. It was just shocking. I thought he was going to grow up to be a basketballer or something. I never expected him to do something like that. The other one was just naughty. He was bad breed. They were just hanging around the wrong people. Wrong place, wrong time. The one boy didn't even carry a knife like that. It was one of the other ones that dragged him into the mix-up, basically. It was just one of them things. He's 14. He tells me he's been targeted by rival gang members and it's made him want to carry a knife. It's a familiar story. People carry knives because there's a fear factor to protect yourself, because you don't know what's going to happen. What kind of knives is it that we're talking about? Literally anything. Anything people that will go in, people will carry. Some people do it for the name, some people do it because they have to, some people do it for the money. Ten months ago, in this very spot, young lives were changed forever. Knife crime isn't going away in Wolverhampton, and neither are the gangs. But the murder has made some people think twice about their future.
for a kid now that's 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, what advice would you give to them about trying to stay away from that? I'd just say, take a second look at life. Put the knife down and go find something else to do, man. It's not worth it. You're either going to end up in jail or you're going to end up killed. One of the two. It's just not worth the risk, in it?